Hi, third graders. Um, I'm back today, and we're going to continue for Reader's Workshop talking about nonfiction text features. Remember, nonfiction text features are extra visuals in print that authors include to help the reader understand the information better. Um, in our first series of these lessons, we took a look at and reviewed a lot of the nonfiction text features that we've been talking about this year. Um, nonfiction text features help us give, us give us a little bit more information about what we're reading about. You may notice that I have a friend next to me, and it's mostly because of the fact that every single time I try to do videos, she tries to get in there. So I just thought today I would include a booty. So she's going to be grouchy and be looking at us while we're learning about nonfiction text features. Anyways, today our reading focus is I can use photos, diagrams, and other text features to gather information about what we're reading. So. We are going to continue to read about the Titanic, and we are going to discuss how diagrams, photos, and illustrations help give us more information about what we're reading. So as we continue on, remember last time we were reading about, though we were reading the heading of the section about the Wondership. Now remember one of the strategies I talked about is when we get back into a book, it's always good to go back and maybe reread the last paragraph or the last page or two about what we're reading to help us dive back in and kind of help jog our memory about what we've been reading. So we're going to do that here. So the wonder ship. So they, we have the heading right there and we're going to keep reading. What made Titanic so special? In 1912, it was the biggest ship ever built. That's why some people called it the wonder ship. And so remember, there's the picture right there, the first class bedroom, the ship's gym, and the first class class cafe, and there's also the grand staircase. And other people had called it a floating palace. Titanic had every possible luxury, fine wood paneling, crystal and gold light fixtures, and a grand staircase with a skylight above it. First class passengers ate, ate fancy meals and enjoyed the ship's gym and swimming pool. So the Titanic terms we we're reading right here was luxury, something that offers pleasure or comfort, but isn't necessary, often difficult or expensive to get. Remember we talked about that word luxury and we found it in the back and another nonfiction text feature called the glossary, which is also really help us to find definitions of certain words if we need them. Um, it says this next page right here, this is what a diagram looks like. So a diagram is a picture or a photograph or an illustration and it usually has lines leading to certain parts of it and it has labels telling what certain parts of it are. So diagrams give us information and will give us information about where things were on the Titanic to give us a better picture about what the boat looked like. Because I don't really know. So um, Titanic had nine decks or levels with separate areas for first class, second class, and third class passengers. So it says Titanic terms here, the bow, the front end of a ship, stern, the back end of a ship, or hull, the lowest part of a ship partly covered with water. So there's the stern, so I know that's the back end of the ship. The hull is the lowest part of the ship right down here. Here is the third class cabin, kind of low in the front. Second class cabin was a little bit higher. Now the first class and then smokestacks were all up here. The gym was at the top. The first class dining room was right there. There's the grand staircase is right in the middle of the boat. The boiler room or where like a lot of the... Um, mechanics were, were below here as well as the pool, the bridge and the bow, the front of the ship, and there's the crow's nest. Okay, so I can tell from this that people who were in the third class and the second class cabins were kind of in the not, not the fanciest part of the ship. And you can tell that people who were in the first class were in a much fancier part. So that's an example of me getting information from this diagram that we're not really going to be told about in this book. So it says, in her own words, so this is a little section we need to make sure we're reading. My pretty little cabin with its electric heater and pink curtains delighted me. Its beautiful lace quilt and pink cushions and photographs all around, it looked so homey. Now that's first class passenger Lady Duff Gordon. So I'm going to skip this page right here, but continue reading right here. Now, another text feature that we looked at were we're going to be talking about are photos. So photograph, photos are photographs, which are actually like pictures you would take with your camera. As that gets compared a lot with illustrations. Illustrations are pictures that would be hand-drawn, okay? 
So when you think about photos as one of your text features, you want to think about them as something you would take with a picture. Okay, so it says right here, Titanic being built in Ireland, 1910. There's the caption right there. And our um, heading, once again, is Building Titanic. So I know that this whole section is going to be about building the Titanic. So that's really interesting. I didn't know right here, and I learned just from this photograph and this caption that the Titanic was built in Ireland. Maybe we'll find out about that in the text, but maybe we won't, and that's why it's important to read. Titanic's tragic story began in 1907. That's when J. Bruce Ismay of the British shipping company White Star Line and William J. Peary of Carland and Wolf Shipyards decided to build three huge ships. One of those ships was Titanic. In 1909, Thomas Andrews began work on the Titanic in Belfast, Ireland. The ship was finished on March 31, 1912. In early April, Titanic arrived in Southampton, England. Then a 900-person crew took a, week, took a week to prepare for the ship's first voyage. And I can see here it says J. Bruce Ismay, Chairman, Chairman White Star Line, Lord William J. Peary, Chairman Harlan and Wolf, and Thomas Andrews, Managing Director Harlan and Wolf. When Titanic left England on April 10, 1912, it had an impressive list of passengers. Oh, I made a mistake. I needed to go back and I needed to read that heading. The heading says Bon Voyage. And I know Bon Voyage is goodbye in French. And so that means that this section is probably going to be about how Titanic left. So when Titanic left England on April 10th, 1912, it had an impressive list of passengers. White Star Line's chairman, J. Bruce Ismay, and Titanic builder Thomas Andrews were on board. So were some of the richest people in the world. The ship also carried many middle-class passengers and poor immigrants who hoped for a better life in America. So there is Colonel John Jacob Astor, real estate millionaire from New York, Benjamin Guggenheim, who made his fortune in the mining business, and Easter Strauss, owner of Macy's department store. This right here is an illustration, and it says um, right here, illustration of Titanic docked at Southampton, England. Now, an illustration differs from a photograph because, remember, an illustration is a hand-drawn picture. So we can look on here, and this what I really like about this illustration is it gives us a really incredible perspective about how big this ship was and how amazing it was for its time. And you can see the people there really looking at it, and you really get a good sense of how big and amazing the ship was from this illustration. So you can see how we grab from these non-fiction -tech, non text features, such as diagrams, photos, and illustrations. We really grab a lot of information that we wouldn't necessarily get from the text. So you need to make sure as you're reading, you're really taking a good look at those diagrams, photos, and illustrations to help add to what you're reading in the text. And that's what good readers do. They use all the information available to them to really understand what's going on as they read and self-monitor. So today for your assignment, you